When I was 16, I was sure I was going to be working in IT for a bank. Little did I know that that was not for me. As young adults, how many job titles do we actually know? On average, we spend 90,000 hours of our lives on work. That's one third of our life. So why don't we work on something we love, care, and are passionate about? Something that gives us joy and fulfillment. At a very young age, we have to make choices that have a big impact on our career. At this age, we tend to follow a path unquestionably to find out that that path is not for us. At this age, we often think we want to become entrepreneurs, lawyers, or even superheroes, while we don't, even, while we don't know what that means. Even me, wanting to become an IT specialist in banking. In hindsight, bank, IT banking was not for me. But little did I know that an entrepreneur would be my thing. In my business, I help companies with a bird's eye view to manage their assets in a sustainable way. We do this by using artificial intelligence on visual data to sort vegetables, to find broken solar panels, and to measure the quality of output streams in recycling plants. So how did I become an entrepreneur by accident? Before I start to share my journey, it's important to know two things that my parents instilled in me. One, you can only dislike something when you have it, tried it at least once. And two, you should always study and work on something you like. So one of the first choices I had to make was what high school am I going to study in? And as my first choice school didn't find my Dutch skill high enough, uh, I ended up choosing for a bilingual school where I got two thirds of my subjects in English instead of Dutch. And choosing a bilingual school made me work really hard. And that made high school also a challenge for me. But it also showed me that real hard work pays off and also exposed me to different kind of cultures. As I went on various exchange trips to Manchester, New York, Bucharest, where I was exposed to these cultures. And this is where I learned that the environment we grow up in gives us a very limited view on the outside world. So after high school, I started studying the Bachelor Artificial Intelligence because it combined the study of implementing intelligent behavior with my passion of technology. After one year, I realized that the university I chose was focusing too much on the philosophical part of the study. And as my parents said, you have to experience something first before you can dislike it. And for me, the study focused too much on the philosophical part, meaning that I like to get practical and apply literally things in the real world. So after a year, I dared to change my university. And even though this cost me, uh, I had to do more courses and do more work. I still managed to finalize my university within the set three years. One example and huge motivator was joining the robotics team that played robot football on the World Cup. I was there literally applying theory into code. And in practice, you also learn that you face multiple problems and that things never go as planned. For us as humans, 
it might seem easy to uh, walk to the ball, see it and walk to it, and then kick it. That might seem very easy for us. For a robot, that took us months to implement. But when you then score a goal at the World Cup and also win out penalties from an Italian team, it makes all the work worth it. Seeing and doing all these practical applications of artificial intelligence and robotics in, and applying that in the real world made me realize that given enough time, we will have technology that will enhance human capabilities. But it also made me wonder, why don't I see these technologies back in our society? Why does it take so long to implement these technologies in our society? Why are we still doing dangerous and repetitive jobs manually while we can already do them automatically? So this is where I started to realize that my passion was lying in bridging technology and society, more specifically in applying technology for sustainability. And this is where I started choosing parts of my master program, for example, the major science in society, to help me gain the skills to bridge this gap out. At the beginning of my master program, I also co-founded a student team that developed a drone to save the rhino in South Africa. The idea was simple. We fly a drone over an area, take pictures, and then analyze these pictures and look for animals, humans, and vehicles, <coughs> and then give this information back to the ranger so that he can protect his nature reserve much better. And within this student team, I became responsible for communication and PR. And although this was not something I studied before, I was excited because I was working on something related to my passion. So one of the major highlights during my trip there was testing uh, the solution in South Africa because I managed to get Dutch Prime News all over to South Africa to cover us in the evening news. But more importantly, I saw what kind of impact our technology had on the rangers on the ground. This sh showed me, or this is one example of how I chose a valuable experience in accordance to my interests. And it led to reconfirming what I was passionate about, applying technology for sustainability. I also realized that there was a huge potential for drones and AI in our society. So I co-founded a company together with some of the drone team members to continue what we were working on. Because the opportunity presented itself, I didn't have any long-term commitments, and my field of study gave me job security. But more importantly, I was working on something that I was passionate about, applying technology for sustainable decision-making. And one of the applications that we work on within my company is recycling construction waste and to measure the quality and the purity of that material. So one example you can see is where we look at wood on a conveyor belt. And we detect the wood on the conveyor belt and then measure how many contamination there is. And by that, we can increase the purity of the output stream. 
and also potentially automate parts of this process. So starting a company might sound scary with a lot of uncertainties. But a lot of decisions and choices that we have to make are made with common sense. The journey might sound chaotic, but on this journey you learn a lot of things which make it all worth it. So what can you do? I want you to think for a moment, a minute, about what you can do to get a clearer picture of what you are interested in and what you are passionate about. You can orient yourself by choosing electives or going on valuable experiences. And last but not least, don't be afraid to follow what interests, what interests you and what you are passionate about. Because in the end, it's what you would like to achieve in your life. Thank you.